What's going on everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and cover all my favorite hidden features of iOS 16. So I had iOS 16 on my device right now for about a month and a half now, ever since it was first released. This is the developer beta, as time making this video, beta seven just got released, which is just primarily like bug fixes here and there. And then the official release for iOS 16 should be sometime in September 7th. What rumors and leakers are primarily saying. But for now, we're just gonna get started and go over my favorite hidden features of iOS 16 that Apple didn't really talk about. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, first thing I like to go ahead and cover is the Face ID now actually works on portrait mode. So before it will only work like this with the screen facing upwards, but now you can actually unlock your device sideways. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate right now. See, boom, just like that, we have access. And recently we have the capability to finally see the battery life percentage of our device right there in a the corner. Currently this is only exclusive on some Face ID devices, not all Face ID devices support the number percentage right here. So if you want to go ahead and enable this, just go into your settings, quickly just go into your battery section, and then battery life percentage right here. And that's how you go ahead and enable that functionality. Let me lower the brightness a bit. So you don't have to go in control center anymore. Now a feature that was secretly added can also be found in the settings section. So if you actually go into your Wi-Fi and you click on the Wi-Fi network you're connected to, on the password, if you actually tap on it, it will use Face ID, but it will actually unlock. So you can really copy it and paste it to somewhere or just give it to somebody so they could quickly type it on their device and enter the Wi-Fi password. So if you forgot the Wi-Fi password, you can literally come here and tap on it, Face ID will unlock, give you the capability to visually see the password to share with somebody. And then we now have haptic feedback whenever we're typing something here on our keyboard. This is new. If you like to go ahead and enable that, you have to go back in your settings, scroll into sound and haptics and go down where it says keyboard feedback. In here, this is where you actually go ahead and enable the haptic feedback. So now whenever each key that you press will give you like a haptic feedback, pretty satisfying. Highly recommend trying it out. Now the other feature is live caption. To go ahead and enable this, just go into your settings, go into accessibility, live captions beta, and just go ahead and enable this. And now let's just go ahead and go on. Oh, and also this is where you can actually enable live captions in FaceTime as well. So now let's go ahead and go on YouTube or something. Click on like a random YouTube video. Notice how we have this little icon here. We could actually like move the live captions wherever we want. So if you tap here. Portion of this video is sponsored by Canon. the reviews i'd watched every video i could find but seeing it myself and experiencing it it's kind of creepy how accurate this is but this is actually really useful and of course you could double tap to have additional options so if you like to minimize it you could just do that and you could just move this little circle around so yeah pretty neat let's go ahead and disable that and yeah you could use it on uh, facetime as well and then it doesn't just end there if we actually go into our notes uh live text on photos, translation, and conversions also got updated. So here we have a time zone from London. If you actually like force press, it'll actually like automatically convert it to Los Angeles time, our local time where I'm making this video. Same goes for currency. We translate British pounds to US right here live, as well as translations by set selecting and then you just go into translate. It'll translate it right here. Uh, kind of buggy, but this was supposed to be French and it'll supposed to translate right here. So if we go into our photos and click on some video that I have that has text, I can actually like copy, if I pause it, I can actually like copy the text. Gotta get it right. Boom, copy and paste. So you can do the copy and paste live text in video now. Now since we're in the photo album, another cool thing, if you actually go into your album artwork and scroll all the way at the very bottom, there's now a new duplicate section. This will basically take the duplicate copies of all the photos you may have accidentally duplicated on your phone and you can actually merge them all too. So if you select all and you tap merge, this will merge the high resolution version of that video or photo into one so it can free up your storage. And then in addition to that, your photo and your recently deleted album now is locked with a face id requirement so if you tap on one it requires face id to unlock i'm afraid to show whatever i have deleted so i'm not doing that but you're always free to play the guessing game in the comic section and make us laugh and then another cool thing i really do like is the uh, new screenshot capability so now whenever you take a screenshot and you have to share the screenshot with somebody instead of like putting it on your camera roll 
especially if you're, all you're gonna do is just send a copy to somebody. You could tap done and you can select the copy and delete and now it's actually on your clipboard. You just paste the screenshot to whoever or whatever place you wanna share it on instead of the screenshot taking a chunk from your camera roll space. And then back in notes, dictation is now a hybrid. So you can actually enable dictation right now to actually do dictation. But in addition to that, notice how it still is enabled. I can still like use, have access to my keyboard and dictation is still enabled. So it's a hybrid now. I don't know what my group chat is talking about. Let me go ahead and put this device on focus. There we go. And then as for Apple Maps, you can add multiple additional stops too, and you can rearrange them. So if you like to go somewhere first before the other place, you could easily click and drag them just like so. And in the vehicle side of things, CarPlay got additional wallpapers as well, and expect more to come in the near future, hopefully. And a feature that Apple brought back is the album artwork in the lock screen. To enable this, just simply tap on it, and there you have it. Now it's going to be fixed to that until you actually click down and minimize it just like so. But this is new and this is a feature that Apple brought back that I'm really happy they did. And then of course if you want to have access to your widget lock screen, tap on it and your widgets will show up right here. That's the next feature I like about iOS 16. Aside from the different wallpapers you can actually save on your device so you don't lose them. If you tap customize, there's widget support for the lock screen finally. And in addition to that, if you like, you can actually link some focus mode to different two different wallpapers so if you have a wallpaper for work you can link that focus mode to your work focus and then back into photo if you actually long press on a subject you can actually like click and drag it boom just like that across different apps and you can just like drop it and paste it anywhere this also includes text and speaking of text messages now whenever you send something you can actually long press you can undo the send or do a quick edit in case you misspell something. So if you misspell something, you can actually hit the check mark and bam, it will actually like correct the mistake you did. And in addition to that, if you tap the edit, you can see an edit history. Now, if you don't want them to have access to an edit history or anything like that, do the unsend. It won't send a notification or anything like that. It will actually hide it from existence. From them seeing what was the previous message, but it will still notify everybody. Now groups is a new feature. You could do it on Safari notes and photos for safari all you have to do is just go on this little window and where you have like the capability to switch between private and tabs right here i notice i have one group chat called g but you could create an empty tab group right here or you could use the current existing one i don't think everybody wants 123 name the group so i'm just gonna put gibberish save and now you have created a group tab you can actually hit the up arrow icon right here. You can share it with your contacts right here to collaborate. So if you want to share Safari with other people, like other tabs you open up, everybody's opening with, everybody's creating, you can all share it right here and then everybody has access to it. Again, you can do this on Notes, Photos, and Safari. And then FaceTime also received new updates where you can actually create custom link URLs. With this URL, you could share it with anybody by simply copying. And if you get that individual who's not in an Apple ecosystem, that URL, they have the capability to join that FaceTime call. All they have to do is enter their pass, their username, and then hit continue. And just like that, they're in that call with you. So if they're on an HP computer, an Android phone, and your friends and family, they're all having this FaceTime call and you like them to join, just send that URL, they could join the call just like that. Aside from that, there you guys have it. Those are my favorite hidden features of iOS 16. Let me know which one of these are your favorite. And if you have some favorite features you'd like to share on your own, feel free to comment down below. Again, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. See ya.